Hi, this is Adam Eliel Berkowitz from Breaking Israel News. Um, I posted videos to our uh, Facebook feed yesterday that are getting very strong reactions. I was very fortunate to attend um, an enormous event, the a sacrifice on the Mount of Olives overlooking the Temple Mount. The sacrifice was intended to renew the covenant of Noah that he established by a sacrifice when he exited the um, the ark. And um, there's been a lot of hateful stuff said about it, uh, much of it inaccurate. So I'd like to set the record straight on a lot of things. Um, number one, this was not a Jewish sacrifice. Jews are only permitted to sacrifice on the Temple Mount ever since the temple, the first temple was consecrated by Solomon. We're not allowed to have sacrifices anywhere else. Um, Non-Jews are permitted to sacrifice to God anywhere. It's actually, um, in Jewish literature, it's considered very uh, um, praiseworthy. Um, and we're not... Uh, it's a very praiseworthy thing for non-Jews to sacrifice to the God of Abraham. Um, and they can do so anywhere except the Temple Mount. Um, everywhere in the world is good for you, but not good for me. So the sacrifice on the Mount of uh, Olives was done, was performed entirely by um, non-Jews who were instructed and aided by the Jews. As a Jew, I see this God willing as the forerunner to the third temple. Um, this was, and I, and I was told by some Christians that this is prob problematic theologically for Christianity because Jesus was the last sin offering for you. And, your sins are taken care of through that. So what I'd like to emphasize is um, that this was not a sin offering. Noah did not make a sin offering. He made a burnt offering in order to establish a covenant. This was absolutely not a sin offering. And it was not to the Jewish God. It was to the God of Abraham. That being said, we did not make anyone go. There were there. It was take, took part as part of the conference of the seven, the organization of the seventy nations, which the Sanhedrin is trying to establish to replace the United Nations, which is anti the Word of God. Um, they are. The United Nations has established um, abortion and euthanasia as a human right. Um, that is blasphemous. It, it contradicts the Noahide laws. Noahide laws are not an attempt by Jews to control non-Jews. Uh, if you read the Noahide laws, there's nothing in there that should be objectionable to any one from any religion that I'm familiar with. Um, I'd suggest you look through them. They include uh, not to worship idols, not to curse God, to, you're required to establish courts of justice, not to commit murder, not to commit adultery, bestiality, or sexual immorality, not to steal, and not to eat flesh from a torn animal. Um, these, are, these are the seven Noahide laws. Uh, I do not know any Christian who would object to that, and to be quite frank, um, Torah-fearing Jews and Christians have quite a bit in common interest to battle the forces of what comes under the um, heading of liberalism that is dead set against many of these. Uh, what we're looking at today is people who, who, are, who hate the Word of God and people who, who love the Word of God. And strangely enough, Israel, I mean, it's a country like any others, but it's becoming the litmus test. The, the, if you, the people who hate Israel, it's an unreasoning hate. There's no reason to hate Israel as a country. Um, 
And the only people who do that, it's because they really, Israel is visible proof that the word of God is still around and eternal because it's really a miracle that after 2,000 years, the Jews came back to Israel. And I'm pretty sure that in Christianity, there, there's implicit a love of Israel. Um, yes, the Jews have to work to make to be worthy of that love. Um, and it's nice to be reminded. It's kind of humbling. I feel very humbled around Christians who look at me and say, we love Israel. I'm like, I wish I deserved it. Um, that being said, the sacrifice, it was really, someone did it, a lovely man for, for the entire world. There was no uh, forcing anyone to do anything. Um, a lot of Christians found it very uplifting. Um, and yes, uh, sacrifices without pure intent are awful. Uh, better not to make them. Um, I was there and this sacrifice had very pure intent. It, it shattered me. I, I, I feel like a shattered vessel being rebuilt to serve God. I, I'm, I'm humbled and, and, and next Sunday evening is Rosh Hashanah. It's the new year. I'm going to stand before God. And I don't know what to say. Um, I, I, I think we did a, a, a huge, huge good for the world. Um, if you look at it and say that it was, it was not the right thing to do. Um, so please come to me with love. I think that's the way it should be done. And, and let's try to fix the world together. If, if we both believe in the God of Abraham, that's what we should be doing anyway. And now I'm rambling. Um, I'm going to put the link for the article that I wrote, in which I think I explained myself much better. It also has the videos themselves. Um, if there are people who are saying that this was a devilish act by the Jews, they're absolutely lying. It was not an act by the Jews, and it was certainly not, the, the, the Christians who did it were certainly not intending this for the devil. Um, be very careful because there are people who are lying about this. You can object to it, but if it takes you to hate, then, then where's your God? You know, if it takes you to anger, then where's your God? If it leads you to say, wow, this was not serving God and we have to work harder and let's approach this man and, and we know that he had pure intention, let's try to help him find the light. Well, that's very different. But I don't think you can say that you hate or, and, and, and think that that's serving God in any way. Um, and you can disagree with me. Please feel free. And if you want to do something to serve God, to, to fix the world, I'd love to hear about it. I really would. Um, I'll put my email address underneath. If you want to send me hate, you know, if that's where you're going, do it. I, I'm, I'm not going to hate you back. Um, if, if you want to send me love, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Jew. I, I, I don't believe in Jesus. I'm not going to believe in Jesus. And if it means I don't get salvation, that's what it means. Um, but please don't hate me. Um, I'd love to connect with you. And if you want to tell me that I'm not going to get salvation, that's okay. It's totally okay. Um, but we're trying, we're, we're sincerely trying to to be a light unto the nations. And we're sincerely trying to bring all the 70 nations together to do that. Uh, one time there stood a temple and all 70 nations went there. Um, Jesus, Jesus went there. Jesus was in the temple and he made sacrifices. So how can you hate it? Even if it's the wrong time, how can you hate it? 
It was never entirely evil. evil. That being said, we're going into a new year and we're all looking for redemption. In, in, in our literature, the salvation, the world to come, is not a result of how many good deeds you do or what God you prayed to. It's really open door, and I like it that way because as long as a person has light in their heart, then I don't want to go to a heaven that excludes them. Um, and if the Messiah means excluding people who are on a different, have a different belief than me, I, I don't know if I want that Messiah. If, if I'm permitted to say which Messiah I'd prefer, I'd prefer a Messiah that looks at every man who, who, who tried to serve God in his way and says, please come, we need you. That's my personal belief. Um, we have a saying, many ships cross the sea and not one can follow the other because they don't leave trails. We're, we're in very new times. Um, it used to be, as a Jew, it used to be there were Jews and there were Christians. And that was what separated us. That was There was a wall. And now... I'm finding myself close to some Christians and far from some Jews. And there are a lot, seem to be a lot more different types of Christians with, with a much more varied belief and approach to God than, than there used to be. There's a lot more Jews like that too. And the fact that the Jews now, I think we're being required to serve God by living in Israel, by being in Israel, by attaching to Israel in a way that we only dreamed about in the past. So th the rules are changing and it, it, it's, it's, it's easy to get lost. It's easy to make mistakes. And the only thing that keeps you going is, 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 is your intent and, and, and your connection to other people who will, who will come up to you and say, brother, I really love you, but this, this thing, can we look at this together? Um, and that's what's gonna that's what's gonna fix us. And coming into Rosh Hashanah, I, I I know that I need to be fixed. But I don't think I did something wrong here. And I know that the people I've connected with over this uh, have been also felt that way. That we did a huge gesture to fix the world. If it caused you to hate, then maybe the hate was already there. And if you hate the Jewish people, if, if like one Jew standing next to one Christian watches the Christian do something on the Mount of Olives, way on this side of the world, and all of a sudden you hate all of the Jewish people and condemn them, assault, then I think the hate was already there. And it's the kind of hate that is specifically um, rejected by the Christianity that I know. And it's the the hatred that has separated us. And we all pray for a house of prayer for all nations in Jerusalem. And you're excluding yourself by hating the Jewish people. If you exclude the Jewish people and it becomes a house of prayer for Christians, that don't, that's not a house of prayer for all nations. If I exclude you and it becomes a Jewish house of prayer, then that's also not a house of prayer for all nations. We all have to be there. And it's that hatred that's going to stop that from happening. So, do with it what you will. If, if I made you angry, I apologize. I think I did a good thing. Um... Be blessed. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, new year. And may we be merited to see, to figure out 
what the Messiah really looks like in the near future. Yes, and I know you know how it is. I don't. Um, I'm just commanded to work towards it. I'm not commanded to tell other people what it looks like. Uh, that being said, be blessed. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And I'll put the links below. And if you want to get in touch with me, I'll also put my Facebook page and you can connect with me through that. Be blessed. Thank you so much.